This jet only has room for two things, fuel and bombs. We've recently had a bomber task force from the United States Air Force visiting the UK. I took a trip to RAF Fairford to talk to two instructors on the B-1B Lancer. Captain Stephen Carey, callsign Pistol, will give us a tour of the aircraft's cockpit and explain some of its unique capabilities. The aircraft flies with two weapon systems operators and Captain Robert Fleming, callsign Splash, will talk us through that role and some of the experiences of bringing the jets to Europe. I was hugely grateful to the folks at the 9th Bomber Squadron for their time in presenting their aeroplanes to me and I really hope you enjoy this video on the aircraft they call the Bone. My name is uh, Stephen Carey, I go by Pistol. I'm an instructor pilot on the B-1. The four aircraft are here part of a bomber task force in Europe. So like the primary role of the bomber task force is agile combat employment. It's kind of taking a small group of Air Force personnel, showing our adversaries that we can employ at an austere location or someplace we normally don't um, employ from in a, in a moment's notice, and then pick it up and go to it somewhere else. Then obviously the other part of deterrence is assurance. So we're out here assuring our allies, integrating with a lot of our NATO partners, strengthening the bonds with our NATO partners as well. I hope you haven't found Fairford too austere. Uh, a little bit of a change from Texas though. Yeah, yeah definitely change from Texas. I kind of enjoy it because I grew up in the Northeast in the US, kind of reminds me of home. So I, I, I enjoy Fairford. My name's Robert Fleming. I go by Splash. I'm an instructor weapons systems officer in the B-1B. We can carry the largest conventional payload of any bomber in the U.S. Air Force inventory. For majority of our training out here, we're carrying 2,000 pound simulated uh, weapons. A uh, lot of valuable lessons learned, especially for some of our young whizzos that are out here for their first time. Down low, it flies a lot like a fighter jet. When we put the wings back, obviously a swept wing airplane, we can kind of maneuver it like a, like a fighter jet there. Up high, it does fly a little bit like a heavier aircraft, you know, a little bit slow on the roll authority. Um, but obviously, as we push it up and go fast, you know, 1.2 Mach, it flies just like a fighter jet. This is the coolest part, I think, of the B-1. Uh, right now, we're full 15 degrees forward, which is going to be really just for slow flight landings and takeoffs, or when we're trying to just loiter and hang out and go really slow and save gas. But typically, there are 25 wings, so 10 degrees back here, that's like for cruise flight. Um, and then what we typically fly in a cast wheel, uh, so around 0.7 to 0.75 Mach will be 25 wing. And then as I want to speed up and go really fast, like 0.85 Mach, I'll go 45 or 55 wing. And that's where this wing, uh, this will obviously be closed and the wing kind of folds back and that upper lip, if you will, will open up and the wing will tuck back into itself. And then I can go full aft 67 and a half degrees and that's when I'm running away bravely or getting somewhere very quickly, Mach 1.2. And that's all manually controlled. Here on my left and located on your right is how we sweep the wings. So full forward right now, 15 degrees, and then it's basically another flight control service. If I need to speed up, I'm gonna move my wings back. If I need to slow down, I'm gonna push my wings forward. Kind of like flaps and slats, but for the entire wing. Our stab, pretty cool flight control system. Um, it can do, it does a split stab, so it's not like the traditional stabilator, if you will, that just goes up and down for pitch. It'll split to create a, a rolling movement. Uh, if you look, we don't have any ailerons on our wing tips, so we do have spoilers to help spoil the lift to drop the wing, but at high speeds, the spoilers would get blown back. So primarily, our rolling movement uh, in the aircraft comes from the split stab, specifically at high speeds when I'm going really fast or down low, uh, when there's a lot of force on the wing, that stab is what, primarily how we turn. And what's it like for, for creature comforts up there? How well do you get on together over a long mission? Getting along is a, is a pretty, pretty easy job. So we do a lot of uh, squadron activities together when we're on the ground to build that morale because when you're stuck in a jet, my longest mission is 24 hours, 23 hours. So when you're stuck in a jet for 23 hours where the only place on that jet I can stand up is actually in the aft crew compartment. I can't actually stand up in the, the forward crew compartment. To my right, about this close, is the OSO, Offensive System Operator, yeah. and then on my left is the DSO, Defensive Systems Operator. So I only have about three feet of space I can stand up in, and then I don't have any room to the back or any room to the front. It's just a little bit three foot by three foot area I can stand up fully in. Really, I just like to go back there and get a relax from the other co-pilot. If he's making me angry or something, I'm just, I'm gonna go back in the back and hang out with these guys. My role uh, is navigation, radios, uh, inputting weapon information. So uh, working through our avionics flight system and inputting all the data uh, for targeting 
and weaponeering. There's two of us, uh, so we have an offensive and defensive side of the aircraft. So you have one person that's primarily defending the jet, the other person is your weapons employment. Yeah, so we have our sniper pod, uh, so we use it. Uh, we can track movers, we can designate and uh, get coordinates for weapons. That's really our view of the outside world in the aft station. You know, in the forward uh, station, they have you know the nice cockpit. They can look outside. For us, we just can see the world uh, through the sniper pod or the radar. So this is for our 2,000 pound class weapons. Uh, and as you can see on each station, there's kind of like an ejector rod. Uh, so that physically will punch and uh, force the weapon to leave. Uh, and then once it's done, it'll rotate, go to the next station, and then you'll release another weapon and it'll just continue all the way around. When we're fully loaded, you know, we're carrying 24 2,000 pound bombs. Uh, and it's, it's pretty destructive and pretty awesome to watch. We can't actually release any weapons uh, from the front station, uh, but we do have like what we call a consent switch or a voting switch, which is right here. So release, we're safe to release up front. And then if we go safe, uh, no munitions can come off the jet. But the Wizzos in the back are the ones actually demanding the aircraft to release the weapons. So up front, what we do is we manage basically what we would call HIFO, hydraulics, engines, fuel, oxygen, and electrics. Right, so we're systems managers. Uh, we have all of our engine information here, all of our fuel stuff here, communication, navigation, electrics, hydro, all around the, the front of the cockpit. So we're managing all those systems, making sure that all the systems are healthy. And then we're also backing up the OSO and the DSO in the back. So with our screen right here on the right, we can see all the things that they can see in the back. So we can work together as a crew and uh, make sure that the tasks that need to get accomplished, get accomplished. And then on our left screen, you would have like what you would call your six pack in general aviation, your attitude, airspeed, your all the things to fly the airplane. And then your movie map, all the, uh, the weapon systems, the defensive stuff, everything over here on your right side. This is how we, uh, our forward glare shield, so this is how we can see the pod or interact with the pod. So in aft mode, we can see uh, the pod, and then when we're in forward mode, uh, it's basically a touchscreen laptop that we can uh, look stuff in, help us replan the flight. We do fly with iPads, but if those break or anything, we can pull up like checklist or anything that we could need on a computer right here on our screen as well. It's an elegant solution to needing a new screen, yeah. next to screen. It's, uh, and this is actually the modern version of that. Before it was uh, a removable system. Now it's like hard mounted into the jet. So the jet's a mixture of 70s, 80s, 90s, and a little bit of 2000s technology. We do look like a heavy aircraft, though sometimes we like to call ourselves a non-heavy aircraft. So we don't have like the throttles in the middle, but we do have independent throttles. So mine are on the left and yours are on your left as well. And obviously, uh, they're independent for each uh, engine as well. So all these switches here controls all of the fuel tanks on the B1, but when they're all in auto, auto, this computer will go ahead and balance the fuel as required. So if I'm about to release eight 2,000 pounders out of my aft bay, 16,000 pounds is going to be released from the aircraft. So that's a large amount of weight to all of a sudden they lose out of the airplane. Uh, especially when we're doing multiple bay releases and our CG envelope is very uh, specific, so this computer looks ahead and says, okay, I'm about to release these weapons. I need the fuel located here in order for the aircraft to maintain its center of gravity. And it can move the fuel that quickly? Does it, or does it, it doesn't preempt move it? it? No, 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 it doesn't move it that quickly. Sure. It does it preemptively. Got it. So the, basically for lack of a better term, that thing can look ahead and talking with all the other avionic systems on the jet, they all can talk to each other and say, hey, I'm about to release these weapons in a couple minutes and then the fuel CG computer will be okay then I need the fuel to be here in a couple minutes and I'll look ahead and it's a system that's hands-off you just rely on it working. yeah as long as as long as it's in normal and everything's working we rarely touch those the, all these switches wow. now all these switches are basically backup for we have two of these computers if both of them break then that's when we would have to do that there's a uh, one and two fuel tanks four to the, the engines basically. The main tanks are basically surrounding the engines or on top of the engines and in the, around the intermediate bay. Then uh, three and four are behind the engines surrounding the bays as well. And then we have our wing tanks in the wings as well. And then with our store bay tank, we have a store bay tank as well. This, this jet only has room for two things, fuel and bombs. <laughs> 
definitely a little bit colder than Texas. Uh, it's been very enjoyable. Uh, we have the British American Committee that you know is trying to get us out into the public and uh, provide different events for us to experience the UK. Uh, and so far I've enjoyed it. It's been very interesting. Um, having the spotters here every time we're doing something is something that I'm not used to. I, the overall interest for the jet is just really amazing. The local community has been great. Um, you know, all the four or five pubs down in Fairford, they, they're very used to, I think, seeing Air Force personnel now walking in and walking out. You guys are always very good at bringing the aircraft out to public events, and we're hoping we might see a B-1 at Fairford next year. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope we can bring a B-1 to Fairford next year. You know, that's obviously not a decision at my level, but us as air crew, we love taking the B-1 anywhere and showing it off and showing the capabilities of the B-1. And obviously 75 years being a, a huge mark in the Air Force for the United States. So I'm hopeful that we can uh, bring a B-1 here for Riyadh, but obviously I can't foresee the future. I'm indebted to the guys at Royal International Air Tattoo for their help in arranging this recording. Don't forget to book your tickets for the Royal International Air Tattoo 2022. Really looking forward to show back at Fairford next year. I'll leave you with the sights and sounds of the B1s taking off. This was recorded on the Wednesday, prior to the aircraft's departure back to the United States. If you've enjoyed what you've watched, do give the video a like, do subscribe on YouTube and like the Facebook page. I'd love to put, put together lots more videos like this for you. It's a bit of a beast, the B1, isn't it? Some gorgeous sights there, the jetty flux with wingtip vortices and they performing on the wings. Very happy to have uh, captured that little moment. This is my one and only trip to film the aircraft take off. The very best way of supporting the channel is to head over to watch.planestv.com. That's where our back catalogue of airshow action stretching back 30 years is available. If you're familiar with, with me, the, the website and the and Planes TV, you'll be very familiar with me plugging that service, but it does give you access to a wealth of aviation action. You can also become a channel member on YouTube. You can uh, become a channel member there. It gives you a couple of perks and uh, yeah, it gives you that warm glow of knowing that you're encouraging me to get out there and produce more videos like this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you at an air show soon. Cheerio.